Hey everybody, this is Ryan King, and in this Blender tutorial, we're going to be making this winter snowman scene. So I'm going to be doing this in Blender 2.82, which is the current stable version. And I'm going to be using two resources online. I'm going to be using this uh, Wood 036 from uh, cc0textures.com. The link will be in the video description. I'm going to be using this for uh, the snowman's arms. And then the other texture I'm going to be using is this Fabric 026, and the link will be in the video description. And I'm going to be using this texture for the hat and the scarf on the snowman. And here I am in Blender 2.82. I'm just going to close the splash screen, and I'll just delete everything. Let me just turn on screencast keys really quick so you can see what I'm clicking right down here. And so I'll just select everything and delete it. I'm going to press Shift-A and I'm gonna add an icosphere. So we're gonna start modeling the snowman. So I'm gonna press uh, Control-2 to add a subdivision surface. Let's go over to the modifiers right here. And I'm just going to just pull this out so we can see it a little bit better. And just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna set the render and viewport to two, and then I'm going to add another modifier, and that's going to be the displace modifier. I'm gonna click right here to add a new texture to this displacement modifier. And then I'll click this button right here and it'll take us to the texturing panel. And then on the type right here, instead of image or movie, I'm going to change that to clouds. And that's going to use this cloud texture that's built into Blender and it's going to displace uh, this actual object right here. So you can see it's making this really cool effect. Now, right now it's way too strong. So we want to make it less strong. So uh, the size I'm actually going to turn up a bit. So there's, I'm going to turn down a little bit, something like, uh, something like that maybe. And then I'm going to go back over here to our modifiers right here, the wrench and the strength. I'm going to turn way down and I'm going to actually hold down shift. Whoop. I'm going to hold down shift while I drag this strength and I'm just going to turn it way down because right now it's just way too big. And the render and viewport, I'm actually going to bump that up to three. So there's just more detail. And then I'll go object and I'll go uh, shade smooth and then just turn this down. This is going to be uh, the snowman. So the snow is just going to be kind of lumpy. And then I will add another subdivision surface on top of that. So I'll go add modifier and just add a subdivision surface and just maybe leave those at one, maybe turn up the strength a little bit, just something like that. Okay. So I like this, this is uh, going to be the starting of the snowman. And then I'm going to add the rest of the snowman. So I'll press shift D and then I'll press Z and just bring uh, the snowman up and just bring the rest of the snowman up. And then I will tab into edit mode and then make sure everything's selected and just scale down. And then I'll tab back into object mode. Why we're doing that is because if I just scale this, it's going to make a lot more detail. See how small this is and then see how big these noise are. So I want to keep the noise level the, about the same amount. So if I tab into edit mode, scale it down, then you can see the noise the noise amount is kind of the same detail. So I'll just make this a little bit smaller. Um, and then also the strength, I might want to turn down a bit. So right here, I can just turn the strength down a little bit because I feel like it's just a little too much. And then maybe just make it a little bit bigger and kind of sink it into the other snowball. And then I'll do that one more time. So I'll press Shift D, Z, pull it up, and then I'll tab into edit mode, scale it down, and this will be his head, the snowman's head. So just make it however big you want and maybe make it a little bit bigger, maybe pull it over. And then also I wanna rotate these, so I'll press R, Z and just give them some random rotation just so that uh, the noise looks different. And then also this one, I might make the noise a little bit less cause I just think it's a little bit too much right now. So just, just pull it a little bit less. Something like that, okay? And then let's save our file so that if Blender crashes or something, we don't lose it. So just press Control S or go File and Save. So I'll just save this on my computer as snowman.blend, and then you can see, if I move myself, you can see Save Blender File, click that right there, and then I'll move myself back. And now uh, what we wanna do is uh, start modeling the nose of the snowman. So I'm gonna just uh, click to put my 3D cursor just about there where I want the nose to be. And then I'll press shift A and I'll go to circle. And then I'll just uh, go here to the add circle. I'll change the vertices to eight because we don't need it to be 32. And then I'll just scale this down and then I'll press R, Z, actually Y. And then I'll uh, type in 90. So I'll rotate it by 90 degrees. I'll press period to just zoom into it. 
and we'll just scale it down and just move it out a little bit. I'll tab into edit mode and I'll press E to extrude this out and just scale it down and E to extrude again. And then I'll just press F to fill that face like that. Maybe just, uh, what you can do is you can press alt and then click on this ring of vertices. So alt click, and then just press S and scale it. And then right back here, I'll press alt and click on this ring of vertices and then press F to fill that face. Then I'll press control two to add a subdivision surface. And it looks like the normals are flipped. So we need to change that. So I'll tab into edit mode, uh, select everything and press shift N and that'll recalculate the normals. So now they've been flipped in the right direction and then tab in edit mode and press control R and that'll add loop cuts. And then I'll click and then just uh, bring out these edges a bit just to make them look pretty nice. And then I'll, uh, I'll press object and click on shade smooth. Okay, and then I do want this nose to be a little bit more pointy. So I'll press three to go to face select, click on this, press E, bring it out and then press S and just uh, scale it down. So it's just a nice pointy carrot for our snowman. I do wanna make this uh, snowman's nose a little bit bent. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode. One to go to vertices select and then I'll press Z and move my mouse this way to wireframe. And then I'm just going to select just like this much of the snowman's nose and just kind of rotate it. And then maybe I'll add a loop cut by pressing control R, just pull that up and rotate it a little bit. And that way his nose will be a little bit bent. I'll scale it down a bit and then I'll just rotate it and stick it onto his face. Uh, you can press double, you can double tap R and then you can kind of rotate it around uh, and it'll give you more uh, ways to rotate it. And so I'll just kind of rotate it, just do it however you want, something like that. Okay, and then I do want to add a camera. So I'll press shift A, add a camera. And then I'll just move myself to wherever I want the camera to be. And then I'll press control alt zero and that'll jump the camera to wherever we are. And then I do want this to be a square image. You don't have to, if you don't want to, but I'm going to make it a square render. So to do that, I will hover my mouse over the dimensions right here, uh, right here in this tab. And I'll press control C while my mouse is hovered over. That'll copy the value. And then I'll press control V and that'll paste the value. And now we have a square camera. So I'll press zero to jump to the camera view. I'll press G and double tap Z and that'll make the camera go forward and backwards. And then I can just press G and just pull the camera over to wherever I want and just move it a little bit. Okay, just something like that. And then I do wanna rotate this nose a little bit. So I'll click on the nose, double tap R, move it a little bit, and then I'll scale it down and just pull it out like this. I'll press period to jump to it and then just push it back into his face a little bit more, uh, just like that. So I like that. Um, so now I'm gonna add his eyes and his uh, mouth. So I'm gonna just click on his head and I'll press shift D to duplicate. And then I'll press uh, X and pull it forward and then S to scale it down and just move it up here. And I'll just stick it right here and just push it into his head like that. So he has an eyeball and then I will shift D this, bring it over and I'll scale it down. Uh, you can give him as many eyes as you want. I'm just going to give him two eyes and I'll make one of them smaller than the other just because I feel like that just kind of makes it look uh, cooler, just kind of more random. One of them is a little smaller and maybe kind of falling down just so that everything's not quite perfect. And then I do want to add a material real quick. So I'll click on the material right here and then I'll click new and I'll call this coal uh, cause he has coal eyes and little chunks of coal. And then I'm going to just, uh, just turn the base color down, but then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll edit those materials later. Um, I'm going to click on this and just drag and drop it onto here. So now these both have the cold material and then I'll scroll down right down here and you can see right here on the viewport display, I'm just going to turn this color down uh, just to kind of a gray color. That way we know it's the coal material. And then I can just shift D this and I can make a little mouth. So you can give him whatever expression you want. I'm just going to give him a nice happy smile. So I'll just, uh, just keep, duplicating these with shift D and just uh, make some bigger, some smaller, and also just a uh, double tap R and just rotate them kind of randomly. I'll do that for this one too. And then I'll just uh, shift D that one more time. So I'll just have five little pieces of coal and just stick it right in there and just kind of push it in a little bit more. So now we have a happy snowman. Um, so that's looking pretty nice. I kind of like that his head is kind of tilted. He's like 
<laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, okay, so we have our snowman now. Uh, let's add his arms. So I'll press Shift A, and I'll add a cube, and then let's scale that cube down with S, and press G and just kind of pull it over here, and we'll stick it right here on the side of him. I'll press period on the number pad to jump into him, or to zoom it over here, and then uh, let's just move it up to wherever we want. And then I'll tab into edit mode. I'll press three to go to face select. I'll just click on this face and I'll press E to extrude. And we'll just bring out his arms just like this. And then at, because this is like a, like a branch that someone just stuck to make his arms, um, we, we wanna make the branch get smaller as it comes out. So I'll uh, scale it as I make it kind of come out. I'll scale it and make it just slowly get smaller and smaller because that's how branches work. So I'll just do that. And then I do want to give him some other like branches coming out. So I'll press control R click and then drag and then click. And then I'll press control R again, click drag, and then just place it where you want. And that way we have like a square right here. And then I'll press uh, three to go to face select, click on the face. And then, then we'll extrude that up with S scale it down and just kind of rotate it and just make it kind of random. So I'll just pull this out like this and then extrude it out again, make it a little bit smaller and just something like that. And then I'll press control two and that'll add a subdivision surface. I'll go to object and then click on shade smooth. Oop, shade smooth. And then I do wanna bump up the resolution a bit cause right now the resolution is really small. So I'll click right here on the modifiers and I'll just bump up, bump up the viewport to two and render to two. And then I do wanna sharpen these edges a bit. So I'll tab into edit mode and I'll press control R and add a loop cut there and then drag it down. And then I'll also sharpen these two ends. So I'll press control R click and then drop it right there and then control R and drop the loop cut right there. So now we have a branch for his arm. I'll just scale it, make it a little bit bigger. And then I want to duplicate this. So he has another arm on his other side. So I'll press uh, shift D, move it over. I'll press R to rotate and then Z. And then I can rotate on the Z axis and just bring it over like this. Or you can just type in 180 for 180 degrees and then just kind of rotate it and bring it up, maybe scale a little bit bigger and just rotate it. And then I do want to make this more random. So I'll tab into edit mode. I'll add uh, some more branches. So I'll press control R and then control R and then three for face select. And then just click on that face and extrude it out and just kind of rotate it and scale it and make it smaller as it comes out and just make it kind of random, just, uh, yeah, cause it's just a branch. And then I'll press control R and control R and make one more, extrude that out like this. And then I'll just press control R to add some loop cuts and just uh, straighten out these edges, just kind of, uh, yeah, make them stronger. And then, yeah, something like that. I like how that looks. So you can make your branches however you like. I'm just gonna rotate this maybe Eh, maybe like that. And then I think I want this branch to be a, bit, a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna pull it out like this. I'll tab into edit mode. Uh, I'll go into wireframe and I'll press one to go to vertice select and then just press B and just select this area and then just pull it back over here. And then I'll go back into object mode. And then just to give this a bit of a curve, I'll press control R, click and then click to confirm that. And then just maybe pull it up a little bit. And now I'm gonna add a ground plane. So I'll press Shift A, go to plane, and I'll scale this up and just press G, Z, pull it down. And so just so that it's on the ground like this, I'll just pull it over like this, and then I'll press S, X, and I'll scale it up on the X axis, and then just scale it up even bigger, bigger and bring it over just like that. And then I wanna scale it again this way. So I'll press S and Y, just scale it like that. Now I wanna subdivide this uh, ground plane to give it more detail. So I'll just press F3, I'll press F3 to search and then I'll start typing in subdivide and then I will subdivide the mesh. And then right down here, I'll change this number of cuts to probably like 20, maybe 25. Okay, that's good. And then I'm just going to deselect everything and then holding down shift, I'll click on some random vertices around here 
and we're just going to make it kind of lumpy, uh, especially at the end. So I'll just go like that, select some random vertices, and then I'll turn on proportional editing by pressing O, or you can just click on this. And then what this will do is when I move these vertices, it'll also move other vertices that are nearby. So I'll press G and Z, and you can see I'm pulling up these vertices, but I'll use my scroll wheel and scroll out this little circle. And what that'll do is it'll uh, move these other vertices that are nearby. So I'll just pull that up like this. I'll just kind of pull it up like that. And then I'll deselect these and just select some more random vertices holding down shift. Just uh, select some random vertices just like this. And then I'll press G, Z and just pull them down. And I'll just keep doing that a few times. So I'll press G, Z, pull these up. And this will just kind of give some randomness to our plane. Uh, so now our plane is kind of all random like this. I'll press zero, go into the camera view. And uh, I think these are a little too tall. So I'll press S and Z and just scale that down a little bit. And then I'll just go object and shade smooth. Now I want to give even more detail to this ground right here. So I'm going to click on uh, add modifier and I'll add a subdivision surface. So subdivision surface, just turn the render and view to two. And then I'll click on add modifier and I'll add a displace. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with our snowman. So on the displacement, I'm going to add a new texture, click right here. That'll jump to the texture panel. And then on type image or movie, I'm going to change that to clouds. And then the size will just make it really detailed like that. So we have tons of noise and then <laughs> that looks pretty weird. But if we just go back to the modifiers and just change the strength way down, you can see now it's just giving it lots of little bits of detail right there. And then just to smooth that out again, I'll add another modifier and add a subdivision surface. And that'll add the subdivision surface below that. And then I'll just turn these both up to two. And now we have some nice detail on our snowy ground. And then I do want to press control B in the camera and just box select this so that when we go into rendered mode, it'll only render what's in the camera because we don't need to render all this other area around here. We can just render what we see in the camera view. So uh, let's give this scene some lighting. So I'm just going to add a plane. So I'll press shift A. I'll actually click right here on the snowman. I'll press shift A and I'll add a plane and then I'll scale this up. And you might have noticed I am using uh, right click select. Uh, so then the left mouse is going to place this cursor. Uh, just so you know, I do use left, uh, I do use right click select, but if you use left click select, then just uh, click with the other mouse to select things. Um, so yeah, I'll add this plane here. I'll just scale it down, just grab and just move it up, rotate it and just kind of bring it like this. And this is going to be our lighting. So now we'll go here to the, uh, materials. We'll click new. We can just call this light. And I'll just change the surface to emission. And then I'll change the strength up to maybe 10 and turn the color to just a little bit of a blue color. Now, if we go into the camera view and press Z, you can see we have some lighting. And then the uh, world, I don't want there to be any color in the world. So I'll click on this world and I'll press X and I'll close it. So now we just have a black world. And then I'll just go, uh, let's see, I'll just click on this light again and just go right over here go into the camera view and I'll just uh, make this a lot stronger. And then I do want it to be a bit more of a blue color because right now it's just not quite blue enough. There we go. And then you can actually see it right here. So I'll just kind of move it over, scale it and just move it to where I want something like that. And then I do want to make sure that my color management is set to filmic. So I'll click uh, right over here on this uh, render setting, scroll down and on color management, just make sure this is set to filmic. And then the look is going to be medium, medium high contrast. Uh, and that will just give us more accurate lighting. And then the look will just make it, the colors look a bit nicer. And then I do want to maybe just scale this up a bit, maybe move it a little bit back, something like that. And then I do want to add a rim light. So uh, I want to add a, a rim light behind the snowman. So I will go back into solid view. I'll shift D to duplicate this light. I'll just rotate it to make it a little bit more straightened. And then I'll press S Z and just scale it. So it's really long and then just scale the whole thing down and then just drop this behind our snowman, go into the camera view and just scale it up and then just kind of move it right outside of the camera view. It's going to be giving the back of the snowman a rim light. 
And right now it's not very strong, so I'll just go over here like this. I'll press uh, this and that'll duplicate the material so it's a separate material. And I'll call this rim light. And then we can just make this even brighter. So I'll just turn this way up, like past 200, more like 300 or something. And then that's giving us a nice rim light, maybe just scale a little bit smaller. And you can see now that's popping out the uh, snowman. And then also this light, I think it's a little bit too big. So I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. And you can also, you could also just make it uh, less strong of a uh, the strength. You could just turn the strength down if you wanted um, and then make it a little bit more of a blue color. And right now it's a little too far away from the snowman. So I'm just going to pull it closer and just kind of bring it over like that. That looks better. Okay. So there we go. Now we have a nice rim light. I'm just going to bring it a little bit closer and just rotate it just kind of like that. Okay, so now we have some pretty nice lighting. Uh, let's do more materials. So I'm going to uh, make this material on his nose, the carrot material. So I'll just click on the carrot. I'll click new. And I can just call it carrot or nose, whatever it is. <laughs> and I'll change the base color to kind of an orangey color. And if I go into rendered mode, I can see right there. I'll just make it kind of an orangey color and maybe turn down the roughness a little bit just like that. Or you could turn it even maybe turn the roughness up a little bit. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay. And then let's click on his eye and we can make the coal material. Uh, to do this, I'm going to jump to the shading tab right here like this. And I'll press zero to go into the camera view. I can just zoom in and then scroll up and you can see, or just press Z and move up and go into rendered mode. And now we can start making this coal material. So I will make the base color really dark. So let's press shift a and let's add a noise texture. And then we're going to use this noise texture to make more noise on the coal. So I will put the factor into the normal right here and then I'll press shift a add a bump node, drop the bump in here and put the factor into the height. And now you can see it's giving a lot more noise like that. Let's just turn the roughness up a little bit and then maybe it won't be so black. So we'll just make it a little bit more gray. And it might be a little too strong, so I'll just change this to maybe 0.7. That's a little bit better. Maybe 0.5. Let's do the snow material. So I'll click on this and I'll click on new. I'll call it snow. And then I'm just going to go out in back into solid view. And I will just uh, click right here and I'll drag and drop the material on all the snow. So I'll just drop it on these three snowballs. And then I'll also drop it on the ground. So now all of these have the snow material and now let's start doing the snow material. So I'll press shift a, and I'm going to add a Veroni texture or however you pronounce it. Veroni, Veroni. <laughs> I don't know, but we're going to add a Veroni texture. I'm also going to be using a node wrangler add on. So if you don't have that, you can just go edit preferences. And then on add ons, you can type in node wrangler and just add it right here. And then you can save preferences if you want it to be in all your blender files. I used a lot because it's really great. And the node wrangler will let us preview different things in the node editor. So I'll just go back into rendered mode. And then uh, right here, uh, when I have this texture selected, I'll just press control T and that's also using a feature in the node wrangler and I'll add this texture coordinate and mapping. So then I'll just plug this object into the vector like that. And then if I control shift and click on this Veroni texture, and this is a big feature of the node wrangler. If you control shift, click on different nodes, it allows you to preview it. So it's really helpful. I'm going to change the scale here to three. So I'll just click drag down and then I'll change all of these to three. So I'll just type in three and now you can see that's a bit smaller. And then I'm going to duplicate this Veroni texture because I want to make another one. So I'll press shift D just drag it down like this and I'll press shift a and I'm going to add a mix. So I'll add a mix RGB right here. And I'm going to drag both of these distances into here. So we're actually going to mix these two together and it'll give it a nice uh, effect. And then right here on this F one on the bottom Veroni texture, I'm going to change this to F two. And if we preview what this looks like by control shift and clicking on the Veroni texture, you can see what it's doing. It's giving this this kind of pattern thing. Uh, and then I do want to plug the vector into the vector right here. And then I want this detail to be a lot smaller. So I'll change the scale 
just way down just uh, make the scale to something like this maybe just maybe even a little bit smaller maybe like that and then this scale I do want this to be a lot smaller as well so I'll just change the scale way down so it has a lot more detail and then I will control shift click on the mix and you can see what it's doing it's mixing both of these together and it's giving it this kind of look so I'll drag this and drop it into the base color and then I'll just control shift click on the principled BSDF and it's starting to look like snow it's not there yet but it's just starting to um, I want to give the snow a little bit of a blue color because it's like frozen water, frozen ice. So I'll press Shift A and I'm going to add a color ramp node. I'll drop the color ramp right here in between the mix and the principled. And then I just want to make this black color a light blue color. I'm going to control shift click on our color ramp just so that we can preview and see what it's doing. And you can see it's making some of this white and some of this blue. So I can just kind of drag this over to make things a little bit more blue. And then I can just change this color, just make it something like that. So uh, now I'll shift control, click back on the principled and I'll just bring this out. And then I do want to add some uh, bump to the snow. So I'll just take the color, drag it into the normal, and then I'll press shift A and I'll add a bump node and drop it in between these two connections. So it converts what it's seeing right here. It converts it into data that it can use to add the bumpiness. So then I'll drop the normal into the height and that'll give it some uh, roughness and some noise right there. And then this is way too strong. So I'm gonna change it down to like 0.1 and then that's a lot better. Maybe 0.15, a little bit bumpier. There we go. And then I wanna add another noise texture to give this bump a bit more noise. So I'm going to shift D this bump, drop it right here. And then I'll press shift A, add a noise texture, drop it right here. And then just put the factor into the height. And then I'll uh, click on the noise texture and press control T. And that'll again, add the texture coordinate and mapping. I'll take the object and plug it into the vector. And then if I control shift and click on the noise, texture you can see how big it is and I want the detail to be way bigger so I'll change the scale way up just so that it has a lot more detail maybe set it to 40 or something like that and then if I control shift click on these bumps you can see what it's doing and there we go so I actually think I want to change these just to like 0.1 both of these okay there we go and then this snow material right now I don't think it has quite enough uh detail like it needs to be a bit smaller so I'm just going to change this scale just a bit more and then make this scale a bit more so it has a bit more detail and then this noise texture may maybe make it a little bit smaller as well there we go that looks better and then uh, I want the snow to look like it's kind of wet and frozen so I'll change the roughness down to like uh, 0.2 you could even make it a little bit smaller. And then that what that'll do is it'll make that shine right there. So it looks like it's wet. I'll press file and save just to make sure this is saved. Um, and then right here, you can see this ground. This is probably happening for you. There's not enough detail. Like the texture is scaled way too big. We want to scale it smaller. So I'll just click to select this ground and I'll click on this and that'll duplicate the material. And I'm just going to call it ground. And then what I can do is right here, this mapping, I can just click and drag these down to select all of them. And then I can move my mouse left and right. And I'll just make the, uh, I'll just make it way bigger. You can see it has a lot more detail. It's cl a lot closer to this. So, uh, now let's do the wood right here. So I'll just click on this, click on new and I'll call it wood. And then I'll also select this arm right here and I'll select the wood material. And then I'm gonna be using that texture that I talked about at the starting. And another super great feature in the Node Wrangler is a super easy way to add in textures. So if you click on the principled BSDF and then uh, you press Control Shift T, what that will do is it'll open up the file browser and then you can just select the textures that you want. So I'm gonna use this wood color and then I'll shift click on the normal and the roughness. And I actually don't want this, so I'll control and click on this to deselect it. And I'll click Principled Texture Setup. 
right there, principal texture setup. And then what that's doing is uh, using the node wrangler, it automatically adds these. So it automatically turns these to non-color and it adds the normal map. So that's really great. And it's just super easy and quick. And then I wanna put the object into the vector because I'm gonna be using an easy texturing method that I like to use. If you've seen my other tutorials, you might've seen me use it. Um, what I'm gonna do is change this flat to box and then change the blend to 0 0.2. And I'm going to do that for the others. So flat to box and then change the blend to 0 0.2 and flat to box and the blend to 0.2. And these all need to be the same because the textures have to overlay on each other, right? Like the normal and the color and stuff. Um, and actually, uh, an easy way to preview this material is to press Z and move down and that'll go into the material preview and I can zoom in and just look at this wood. And then right now it's, it's way too small. You can see it's like, uh, you can just see the texture again and again and again. Uh, so I'm going to change the scale way smaller, just bring it way bigger. There we go to like a 0.09 or something like that. So it looks like it's like a wood stick. Um, and then if I just go in back into rendered mode, you can see there it is. I might change the strength to like two on the uh, normal, just that the, there's lots of bump. And you can see it's doing that for this as well. And then these sticks here. I want them to have more uh, noise in the mesh. So I'm going to add a displace modifier just like I did like this. So I will go over to the modifiers, add modifier and add a displacement. And they'll do the same thing, add a new texture, click right here and I'll change this to clouds. And then I'll make the size really small. And then I will go back over here uh, I think I'll bump the render and viewport to three just so that it has more detail. And then you can see right here, there's a lot more detail and right here, there's a lot less detail. That's because if you tab into edit mode, you can see there's a lot of vertices here and there's less vertices here. So to fix that, I'll just press control R, add a loop cut right here and then control R, add a loop cut right there. And then I will uh, tab into edit mode on this one and I'll just add a loop cut right there and a loop cut right there. And then that'll add more detail kind of even it out a little bit more. And the strength is too much, so I'm just gonna change the strength down a bit. So there we go, if we go into rendered mode, you can see now the stick has a lot more uh, roughness and noise onto it. So I'll just do the same thing really quick right here. So I'll go add modifier, I will add a displacement, add a new texture, change it to clouds, make the size really small, go back over here, and then just make the strength less. And then I'll bump up this viewport and render to three. And there we go. So now we have uh, his sticks for his hands. And now let's make the hat on his head. So I'll go back into layout and I'll just go into solid view and let's just select his head, press period to zoom in. And uh, for his hat, we're actually going to be modeling a simple hat, but then we're gonna be using a cloth simulation and we're gonna drop the hat on top of his head. All right, let's model his hat now. So I'll press Shift A and I will add a circle and I'll just scale this circle down and I'll go to front view and I'll tab into edit mode and I'll press E to extrude, bring it up, press S and scale it down. And we're gonna kind of help out the cloth simulation because we want it to be we want the hat to kind of fall over this way. And if we don't model it that way, it'll kind of just fall on top of his head. So I'm just gonna press R, rotate this, and then E and S and just kind of bring it over so that the hat's kind of rotated just like this so that then it'll kind of fall down sideways. So I'm just extruding it and scaling it and rotating it. And then I'll press F to fill that face. And there we go. And then I'll just bring it kind of over and make sure it's just uh, on top of his head. And then I want to give this a lot more geometry. So I'll press control two, uh, just like that. I'll go to the modifiers and I'll just apply that. Now you can see that we need to recalculate the normal. So I'll tab into edit mode, select everything and press shift N and that'll recalculate the normals. And then I want to give it some thickness. So I'll go add modifier and add a solidify modifier. Just bring up the thickness. Now I'm going to add the cloth simulation. So I will click right here on the simulations and I'll add cloth. And then I'm going to click right here on his face and I'm gonna add collision. And so that way it'll collide into that because we added the collision in the simulations. So now I'll just click on this. And there are a few things I wanna do. The stiffness tension, I wanna turn that to eight because I don't want it to be very stiff. I want it to be a bit less stiff. And then I'm gonna scroll down. And then uh, right here on collisions, I'm gonna turn on self collision. That way it won't collide into itself. 
And then uh, right here on the bake, I'm gonna set this to like 50 and then I'll bake that. And just make sure you click file, save, and then bake. All right, so it finished baking. So if I press the space bar to play that, you can see now it kind of falls down. And this is what we want. Um, something I don't like about it though, is it's it's not really a uh, detail. It doesn't have enough geometry. So I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna add modifier, add another subdivision surface. And then I will just click right here to bring the subdivision surface to the very top and just uh, set render and viewport to one. And then I'll apply that. And then I'll just go back here. And then also the stiffness, I think it's a little too stiff. So I'll click delete bake. I'm gonna go right here to the stiffness attention. And I'm gonna just change that down to like five. And then I will click bake again. And so now it finished. So if we press the space bar or click on play, then you can see it and there it is. And so now you can just uh, find a point that you want. I think I like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna press control two and that'll add another subdivision surface on top of the, our uh, simulation. And it'll just go object and shade smooth. And then what I'm going to do is go over here to the modifiers. I'll apply the solidify modifier and the cloth modifier, and then I'll just leave the subdivision surface like this. So now if we tap into edit mode, you can see it's now a mesh. So now I'll just rotate this, bring it over, scale it down a bit. And you can even scale it down on the Z if you want. And I'll just set the hat on his head however I want. Just something like that. Now all the cloth simulations are kind of going to be different because I've gotten a lot of different results and you can play around with it, just move it around to kind of get it how you want. But something I'm going to do really quick is just uh, make this area smaller. So I'll just go into wireframe mode. I'll press five to go into orthographic view and then I'll just, uh, I'll just actually shift select uh, these points and then I'll B and just box select this whole area just to make sure all these are selected and I'll just kind of bring them in a bit and then bring these up, scale it down a little bit, and then I'll alt shift and then click to deselect that and just bring this up, scale this down a little bit, just like that, so that way that area is kind of smaller. Now uh, let's add the material to that. So I'll go into the shading and we need to actually uh, mark a seam so that we can UV unwrap this so that we can add the texture. So I'll tab into edit mode and then I'll press alt and just uh, click on a loop until I find a loop like this that goes all the way up and then down and I'll press control E and then I will mark the seam. And so now we can UV unwrap it better. So I'll just select everything and then press uh, U and then click on unwrap. And if we go over right here to the UV editing real quick, you can see it's UV unwrapped it. That's a pretty good UV unwrap. Uh, it could be better, but it's pretty good. Um, so I'll go back over here to shading, press zero to go to the camera view, and then I'll click new and I'll call this cloth. And then I'm going to use the uh, node wrangler add on. And so I'll press uh, control shift and then I'll click T and that will open up the file browser. And now I can just select uh, all the textures that I want. So I'm gonna use this fabric texture. The link will be in the video description and I'll just control and click on these three. So the normal roughness and color. And then I'll click on principal texture setup right here. And now it just automatically added these. And then if we uh, press Z and move our mouse down, it'll go into the uh, material preview and we can see what this is looking like. So there we go, that looks pretty good. I do wanna make uh, this a lot smaller though, cause these need to be really small because they're like little pieces of cloth. So I'll just click and drag down and then just uh, bring this value way down just like that. And that looks a lot more like cloth. Maybe bring it up a little bit cause maybe that's a little too big. Okay, and then if you want, you can kind of rotate it like this by using the Z rotation and stuff. Uh, I think I'll just rotate it like this so that this is now kind of going uh, back and forth. And then to make it look more like cloth, I'm gonna turn this sheen all the way up to one and that'll make it more like cloth. Um, and now I can go to rendered mode and just look at it and see how it's looking. So that looks pretty nice. Uh, I do want to make it more red though. So right here, I'll just press shift A, I'll add an RGB curves. So RGB curves, and I'll drop the RGB curves right here and then I'll just go to the R for red and just bring up this so that it really boosts that red color. So I do want to pull this back a bit cause it's kind of making a bit of a shadow on his face. So I'll just drag his hat back a little bit, um, but I don't want the snow to get through. So I'll just kind of 
uh, move it how I like. And then uh, I can just tab into edit mode, press A to deselect everything, and then I can select one of the vertices and I can just pull it out. Um, and I'll use proportional editing like what we used before. So I'll press O or just click on this and I can just kind of drag this. So I'll press G to move this, bring it down, and I can just kind of pull this out so that it's not uh, it's not bringing the snow through, the snowman's head through. Just like that. Okay, there we go. So we can't see any of that. So that looks good. Um, and then I'm going to model uh, this little kind of frilly thing at the end of his hat. So I'll go back into the layout. Um, I'll press 5 to go out of orthographic view. I'll zoom in here and I'll just add the 3D cursor right here. I'll press Shift A and add a plane. I'll scale this plane down. I'll press period to zoom into it. And then I'll just kind of rotate it around. Um, I'll tab into edit mode, select these two points, and I'll press E to extrude and just kind of keep extruding it so it makes this kind of little cool look. And then I'll press Control 2 to add a subdivision surface. And now you can see it's added this uh, funny little frilly thing right here. Uh, I'll tab into edit mode, select everything, and press Shift D to duplicate. And then I will deselect this because I don't want to use the proportional editing anymore. And then I'll just rotate this around just like this double tap A and then, or just select everything and then shift D and then just rotate this again. Okay. And then I'll select everything again, shift D all of those double tap R just kind of rotate them around and we're just kind of making this fun little thing at the end of the hat. And then I'll do that one more time. So I'll select everything shift D again to duplicate all those and then just kind of rotate it around uh, randomly and just put it how I want something like that. Okay. That looks good. And then I will go to object and I'll go to shade smooth. And then I want to give these a little bit of a thickness. So I'll go add modifier and I will add a solidify. I'll move the solidify modifier up by clicking this up arrow. And then I'll just turn the thickness up a bit like that. There we go. And then these are a little too big. So I'll just scale them down a little bit and just rotate them a bit. Okay. And then I'll go back into shading. I'll add a new material. I'll call this like hat top. And now I just want to make this uh, kind of like a dark blue color. So I'll just go like this. Uh, you can make it whatever color you want. And I'll just go into render mode here. And you can see I'm just making it kind of a dark blue color. Maybe not a dark blue color, just a blue color. And then I'll turn sheen all the way up. And that'll make it more uh, feel like cloth. So now uh, we need to model his scarf to keep him nice and warm. So to model the scarf, I will just click about here to set the 3D cursor. And then I'll press Shift A and I'll add a plane. I'll press S to scale down the plane and kind of rotate it a bit. And I'll press period on the number pad to zoom into it. And then I'll double tap R to rotate it. Just kind of pull it out like this, rotate it, move it over. Okay, like that. And then I'll tab in edit mode and I'll just start extruding these points out. So I'll press E and just rotate by pressing R, just kind of scale it. And I'll just make it go all around his neck so that his, uh, he'll be nice and warm in the winter. And I'll just press R, rotate that and press E to extrude and just go all the way around. And then you can just select single points and kind of rotate them or move them down and just keep going around his neck all the way. Just kind of move these down because I don't want there to be that much room in between that. Just kind of move these down a bit. Um, I am trying to keep the width somewhat consistent though. So I'm going to just make sure that kind of stays a bit more consistent. Just kind of, mo uh, just kind of keep on modeling this until it's the shape that you want. You can see there's too much uh, room right here. So I'll just pull this down and this down and scale that down a bit. Okay, and then right here, I want this to curve down so it's kind of hanging down. So I will uh, press E and then R. Oh, select these, rotate them, and just kind of make this so that it's kind of falling down just like that. Okay. And just bring, bring that down like this. And then this, I want it to kind of look like it's tucking underneath the scarf. So I'll just press E extrude that up and just uh, move this down. And then I'm going to kind of uh, make this so it curves around and it goes underneath just like that. So kind of see that it looks like it's going underneath it. 
So I'll tab into edit mode now, click on this and just kind of move this down. Okay, like that. So that's pretty good modeling. Uh, and then I want to add a solidify because it needs to have some thickness. So I'll go to add modifier and again, add the solidify modifier, just kind of bring up the thickness and then I'll press control two to add a subdivision surface. And then I do want to tighten up these edges a bit. So I'll tap into edit mode. I'll press control R, put a loop down there and then I'll press control R, bring a loop to this side, press control R and bring a loop to this side. And then I'll go object and shade smooth. So now that looks pretty good. It's a nice scarf. We do want to make sure this doesn't happen. So I'll tap into edit mode, just select some nearby points and just kind of drag them up like that. So the snow doesn't get through. And then here as well, the snow's kind of coming through it. So I'll just bring these up a bit and just make sure that all looks good. This I might bring out a little bit more. Okay. I like how that looks. Maybe just this, bring this a little bit down. Okay, there we go. And then I want it to have the same cloth material. So I'll just uh, click on right here on the materials. I'll click on this and then I'll just click on cloth. I'll go into the uh, shading tab right here and then I'll just uh, press Z, move my mouse down so I can see the material preview. And you can see we need to UV unwrap this because the UV unwrapping is all weird. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode, select everything, and then just press U and unwrap. And if you want to make this more detailed, we can click on this and that'll duplicate the material. I'll call it a uh, scarf. And then you can go over here to the mapping and I'll click, drag down to select all these and then I can just move my mouse left or right and I can just change that. So if I want these to be smaller, I can just do that like that. And then again, if you want to kind of rotate this, you can do the rotation and kind of rotate it around if something looks better. Um, something like that. I like how that is. Okay. So that's done. Let's go into rendered mode. I'm actually going to go back into layout, go to the camera view with zero, and then I'll just kind of look at this and see how it's looking. So it's looking pretty nice. Um, I'm going to make this eyeball a little bit smaller because I think it's just a little too big. So I'll just pull it down, scale it down a little bit, just a subtle thing. Okay. Uh, that's looking really nice. And so, uh, one more big thing that we're going to add is the snow. So we're just going to make like one snowflake and then we're going to add a uh, simulation, a particle simulation and just have the, uh, it rain kind of snow down on our scene. So I'll go back into solid view. Uh, I'll press shift a, and I'm going to add an icosphere. I will make the subdivisions all the way just back to one. And then I'll press uh, object and I will shade smooth. And then I'm going to just add one subdivision level. So I'll press control one to add a subdivision surface. That'll just kind of smooth it out a bit. And then I'll just press G kind of pull it over here so we don't see it. And then I'm going to call it snowflake. So I will click right here on the object uh, settings and I will just click on this and call it snowflake. Okay. And then, um, I need to add a plane that's going to emit those snowflakes. So I'll press shift a add a plane. I'll press G Z pull it up and then I'll press S and just scale it out a bit. And I'll press S and X and just scale it out. So it's like this, move it over. So it's over the entire scene. Uh, maybe that's a little too long. So I'll press S X, just bring it down a bit and then scale it up like that. And then I'm going to, uh, right over here, uh, I'm going to click right here and this is the particles and then I'm going to click right here and that'll go to the particle settings and I'll click plus to add a new particle. Uh, the number I'm going to make it like 10,000. If your computer can't handle that, then you can do less, but I'm going to make it 10,000. And then I'm going to go down here and on render, I'm going to change the render as to object. And then I'll click right here and I'll start typing in snowflake. I'll click on the snowflake and now it'll uh, emit all the little snowflakes. It'll um, emit this object. And then I'm going to go to cache right here and I can bake it. So I'll just set this end value to like 50 and then I can click bake and that baked pretty fast. And if I click play, you can see it's uh, raining down snow. Uh, I'm, I actually need to give it more time. So uh, this end value, I'll just make it to like 100. And then I'll just bake that again. So I'll click delete bake and then bake. As you can see now it's baked and it's all the snow is all just falling down like that. And you can just find an area that you like. Now, if the snow is too big or too small, you can change that. Um, you're going to go to right here, the render as and the scale, you can just change the scale 
And then if you want to change the random scale, you can do that. And that'll make some of them randomly a bit bigger and some of them a bit smaller. So just find an area that you like. Um, I don't want there to be giant snow, snowflakes right in front of it. Um, so something like that. And then you can go into rendered mode and just see how it looks. And you can see that's looking pretty nice. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to move it around a bit because I want there to be a bit less close up like that. Okay, I like that. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, and then I do, I don't want to be able to see this because if you look, you can see there's the plane and you can see it. So I will go to the materials, add a new material and I'll make it transparent. And then I'll just make sure this color is fully white. And now when we go into rendered mode, you can see, you can't see that plane. So it's just all black. Um, and then something else just to make it look even nicer is I'm going to add a depth of field. So I'll just click on the camera right here, go down, and then I'll click on depth of field. The focus object, I'm going to uh, focus on his nose, actually. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can do his head. I'm just going to do his nose. And then I'm going to change the f-stop to maybe like 1. I'll go into rendered mode just to see how that looks. Um, I do want it to be a strong depth of field so that the snow is kind of blurred out a little bit. So I might go like 0.7. And so now I'm going to uh, set up the final render. So I'll go over here to the render settings. Um, the the render sampling, I'm going to change it to 200. You could just have it at 100 or something. That will probably be fine, but I want it to look really nice. So I'll just make sure it's at, I'll just set it to 200. Uh, 100 will probably be fine. Uh, the light paths, uh, I'm going to turn these down so that it'll render faster. So the total, I'll turn to two, uh, to two. The diffuse, I'll turn to two, two. The glossy to two. And then the transparency, turn to zero. Transmission, zero. And then all these, zero. Uh, filter class zero and just turn off these that way the render will just be faster it won't have to calculate as much stuff um so now just go file and save and then you can hit f12 or go file and render the image and then once that's done rendering we're going to do a little bit of compositing just to make the scene look really nice and then we'll have our finished render all right so the render has finished let's just do some quick compositing so i'm going to go over to the compositor i'll click on use nodes and then I'll just press N to close this because uh, we panel because we don't need it. And I'll just bring this out right here. I'll press Shift A and I'll just search for RGB curves because I just want to edit some of the colors. And then using the Node Wrangler features, I'll press Control Shift and click on the RGB curves just to see that. And if you don't see this backdrop, you can just click on that and you should be able to see it. And then I can press V and that'll just move the backdrop out. And now I can just play around with some of these colors. So I'm just going to boost this up a little bit. That's a little too high. And then just bring this down a little bit. That'll just kind of give it a bit more contrast. And I think it looks makes it look a bit nicer. And uh, then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a glare node. So I'm going to press Shift A, add a glare, drop it in right there. And then just change the streaks to fog glow. And that'll just kind of add a glow on the side of him. I'll just change that to like high quality. And you can see there it is. And then the other thing that I want to do is add the denoise node. So I'll press Shift A, start typing in denoise, click right there, and just drop it in. And then it will kind of denoise that. And that'll get away all those speckles and little things down there. And there we go. That's the finished render. So I'll just go over to this rendering panel right here. And then from render result, I'll click on viewer node. And then we can preview our finished render. To save it, I'll press Shift Alt S. And I'll just save it as snowman. And then if I just move my face, you can see right here, just click on save as image. And here it is the finished render. I do think that maybe I should have rendered it on a different frame because that little piece of snow is right there. But you can, uh, if that happened to you, you can go ahead and just change that. And when I made this scene a few other times, I did get some results that were slightly different. So this was kind of the best one that I got. And I did just want to share with you guys that I am uploading my tutorials to the Blender Market and also on Gumroad. So I've just started these. I still need to upload the rest of my tutorials, but I'm going to be uploading uh, pretty much all my tutorials and they're only a couple dollars. So this is just for if you want to help support me, uh, you can buy them and then you'll get to download the video of the tutorial. And then you'll also get like the finished render and the finished Blender file and the textures and all the things like that. So there will be uh, links in the video description to my Blender Market and Gumroad page. So if you do want to support me, this is a great way to and I'd greatly appreciate it.
Um, but all these tutorials are going to be, of course, free on YouTube as well. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. And as usual, um, with all my Blender tutorials, if you do this render and you uh, post your render online, you can leave a link down below uh, so that I can see your guys' finished artwork. I like seeing your guys' stuff. So if you want to do that, you can leave a link with your finished artwork. And thank you for watching. See you in another video.